I made a walnut keyboard stand. I was sick of looking at the ugly basic keyboard stand that we have, so I decided to build something that looks like a really nice piece of furniture. It's a very simple basic build, but there are a few small details that make a huge impact on the design. The tapered legs, the curved sides over here, and the soft close lid. The hardware for the lid and other tools I used to make this table is from Woodcraft, the sponsor of today's video. Let's get started with the build. I started off by marking out all my pieces of the rough walnut and I cut it to size using the circular saw. I got really lucky and I found some pieces that were wide enough and I did not have to glue up any panels for this build. I don't have a jointer so I used a planer sled to surface one face of the walnut and then I could flip it over without the sled and surface the other side. But some of these pieces were too long for my sled and I didn't have the materials to build a new one. So I whipped out the hand plane and I surfaced one side and I got it flat enough that I could send it through the planer on the other side and get it all cleaned up. Milling without a jointer is a little bit difficult and I find the best way to clean up the edges is to offset the outfeed fence on the router table and then it gets a perfectly square edge and then I could take the piece to the table saw and clean up the other edge. After everything was nice and square, I started cutting everything to their final dimensions. I used this eight quarter walnut for the legs and I used four quarter walnut for the rest of the body of the table. I used my cross cut sled to get one square end of the board and then I could flip the board around and then cut it to its final dimensions again on the cross cut sled. Now that everything is cut to length, it was time to work on all the details. I laid out all the pieces on my workbench and I marked off where the bottom of the apron meets the leg. Then I made another mark one inch down from that mark and that's where the taper is going to start. I did not make a video on this taper jig, but I'll put a link to a really great one down below. The leg tapers to about half its width, so I made a halfway mark on the bottom of the leg and then set the jig and started to cut. Because the toggle clamps I used for the jig do not auto adjust to thickness, after I made the first cut, I kept the cut off and then taped it back onto the leg. This way I could rotate the leg onto an adjacent side and then clamp it back down without having to adjust the clamps and then I made the second tapered cut. The beauty of this sled is that I only have to set it once and then I could continue cutting the rest of my pieces. They just needed to be cleaned up a little bit with the hand plane and I could move on to the rest of the details of the table, the curved sides. I rough cut the curve on the bandsaw and then I taped the two sides together with double sided tape and took it to the benchtop sander to refine the curve just a little bit more. After separating the two sides, they were now completely identical and I could move on to some joinery. I marked all the pieces for a groove that the plywood bottom is going to sit in. Then use my center finding gauge to find the middle of the board so that I can set the blade height to about half the width of the board. Then I got to cutting a groove. I don't have a dado stack so I had to do this cut in multiple passes and I made this cut on both of the side pieces and the front apron as well. After many passes, I had a groove but it wasn't clean because I don't have a flat bottom blade so I cleaned it up a little bit with a chisel and then got it really smooth and flat with the router plane. I love using this thing, it's really satisfying to use. After all the grooves in the side pieces and the front apron were all cleaned up, I was able to measure for the plywood. I made this really rudimentary gauge thing using two scraps and a rubber band to get the inside measurements from those grooves so that I could cut my plywood to size. And then rip the plywood to size using my circular saw. Now, I had a choice here. I could either notch out the legs to fit the plywood or notch out the plywood to fit the legs. I chose to do the latter, so I marked out a little notch and cut it out with a little handsaw. And if hand tools aren't your thing, I also cut some of them with this Dremel and that worked out pretty well too. The speakers on the keyboard are on the bottom of the keyboard, so I didn't want the sound to be blocked by the bottom of the plywood. So I made these holes with a hole saw so the sound can come out freely and then clean them up with the router. Moving on to the joinery, I decided to use dowels for this build. To make marking the dowel locations easier, I decided to make a template. So I made sure to line it up with the top and the side of the leg, and then I used a brad point bit and tapped it into the hole just to find the center of that hole. Then when I take the jig off, I know exactly where to drill at the drill press. I set the depth stop at the drill press to be slightly longer than a halfway mark of the dowel that I was using and then just drilled away into those center points that I had made previously. Now for the side pieces and the front apron, I used the same jig and I put it on top of the piece. 
I made sure when I had drilled the hole previously that I had brought the center lines down onto the side of the jig. That way I can lay it on top of the workpiece and bring the center lines down onto it. Then when I flipped the board over, I had to make sure to flip the jig and make sure that the arrow was facing up onto the workpiece so that the holes will be drilled in the right locations. Once all the pieces were marked, I used my self-centering jig to drill all the holes for the dowels. So whenever you see videos of someone using a domino joiner and you get discouraged because you don't have a domino, you can always use dowels. This is a really great alternative method and it's a really strong joint. And this method of using the template worked out really, really great. I did a dry fit just to make sure all the pieces fit and then I sanded all the pieces before assembly. Before assembling, I used a countersink bit in all the holes so that the glue squeeze out had somewhere to go or that the wood won't swell up from the water in the glue and then I got to gluing. I put glue in all the holes and then put dowels in the holes and then put glue on the dowels. Glue everywhere. I use way too much glue when I do my glue ups and it's really something that I need to work on. I tried protecting the pieces with some tape, but it's still, there was still glue everywhere. So whatever. I tapped everything into place and then set it up in clamps overnight. And I did this to both of the sides first. And I cleaned up most of the glue squeeze out with a wet rag before setting it overnight. After the glue was set on the side pieces, it was time to connect them using the front apron. I put glue and dowels in all the holes and then put the apron onto place. And I couldn't put the second side on yet because the back legs were jutting out and I wouldn't be able to slide the plywood in. So I had to put the plywood in first into the grooves. And when staining the plywood, I made sure to mark off the pieces that the glue was going to go on so that the glue would actually stick into the grooves. I'm gonna put the dowels in here. Sorry you can't see me, but I'm kinda stressing out. Anyone else gets super stressed during a glue up? So I attached the second side after the plywood was in place. I used a mallet to bang it into place and then I used some pipe clamps to tighten up the joint and I also used some clamps on the back side. While that was drying, I measured for the back panel and cut it to size, stained it, and then drilled a hole so that the wires can go through the back. I realized I should have stained it after I drilled the hole though. <laughs> I also drilled out for some pocket holes in the top and sides of this panel. I'm going to be using these figure eight tabletop fasteners to connect the back of the top to the table. So they're really easy to install. You just use a Forstner bit and you drill until it's the correct depth. And then you take a chisel and just pare away a tiny little bit so that the fastener has room to move and the wood now can move with the seasons. I used a Vix bit to drill a center hole and now it's time to mark the mortises for the hinges. I used a knife to mark out the location of the hinge. And then I used a square to deepen that knife wall just a little bit more. Then I took my knife and I marked into the corners of the board to bring the line up on top of the board so that I can see it when I put the board down. Then I lined up my backboard and my front board and carried over that line onto the front board. That way the hinge will be on the exact location on both of the boards and I did not have to do any measuring to do that. Another way to avoid measuring is to use the actual hinge to set the depth height of the router. I cleaned up most of the mortise for the hinge using the trim router. I stayed really close to my lines, but I didn't get next to my lines. Once I was finished clearing it up, I could take the chisel and carefully pare away into that knife wall to create a perfect fit for the hinge. I'm pretty new at using hand tools and I don't really get to use them often, but they're really useful in cases like this. It's just so much more precise and safer to use despite the tape on my finger that I am using as a band-aid. Once the hinges fit nice and snug into the mortise, I used a Vix bit again to pre-drill all of the holes. I really wanted to add some more brass accents to this piece because I just love the combo of walnut and brass. So I decided to just add this little eighth inch brass pin into the corners of the top. Traditional shears work fine to cut the brass, but this battery operated one was just really fun. The brass sands down super quick with a belt sander. Just gotta be careful not to actually sand down the walnut. The last thing that I had to make was the ledge that's going to hold the music books. I took a scrap piece of the walnut and I took it to the router table and ran it along with a straight bit that was slightly lower than that piece of scrap. To attach it to the top, I marked the center of the ledge and the center of the board and then used some tape as markers for the correct height. 
I'm only using glue here and I think it's going to be plenty strong. But if it's not, I can always come back and add some reinforcements if my kids pull it off or something. I set that to dry and did all the final sanding by hand to make sure that everything was just smooth to the touch. I know my kids, so I knew I needed a hard wearing finish on this. So I decided to spray four coats of Aqua Coat Aquathane and I sanded with 320 in between each coat. After it was all dry, I brought it in for final assembly. I screwed on those uh, figure eight fasteners and then made sure that the top was equal on all sides with the combination square, clamped it down, and then I needed to use a right angle attachment on my drill to pre-drill the holes into the tabletop, and then I screwed it all down. After it was in place, I was able to put in the back. I'm using pocket holes to attach the back. And I know that using the pocket holes, the top is not going to move, but using the figure eight fasteners on the front part, attaching it to the apron, it's going to leave some room for movement. At least I hope. So I locked down the back to the legs and then I pre-drilled some holes that's connecting it to the bottom of the cabinet and used some screws to lock it into place. The hinges have brass screws, which are prone to breaking. So I made sure to use some wax before screwing them into place. The wax comes right off with some towels right afterwards, and it's really easy to install them this way. Not so easy holding up the heavy board to attach the top. There has to be a better way to do this. I am probably not doing it correctly, but I got a good workout from installing the top. After the hinges were nice and secure, it was time to work on the soft close stay. Now the instructions that came with this thing were in gibberish and I could not understand them at all. So I decided to just go by what the picture looked like and I used some tape to mark off where I should drill the holes and then use my combination square to set that mark so that when I pre-drill the hole, and then set the screw into place, I could then use the combination square to just quickly straighten it up to pre-drill the second hole. Then I could lock that down with a screw and then work on the bottom part of the hinge. I used some double-sided tape on that silver piece and then temporarily put it onto the hinge and placed it onto the table where I thought it should go. Then I took the hinge off carefully and that silver piece stayed there and I pre-drilled the holes and then I could screw that into place. And to my surprise, the hinge actually worked. I thought that I was going to need two of them, but this one hinge was plenty strong enough to support this lid. I am so happy with all the small little details on this table, like the slight reveal from the legs to the apron, which was all possible with that dowel jig that I made, and using a scrap to make a ledge to hold the music books, and of course, that little brass dot. I just had to add the little brass in there. I am so super happy with how this came out. I think this is the nicest piece of furniture that I've ever built, and I can't wait for my kids to get some good use out of it. The tapered legs were so easy to do. It was just a simple jig on the table saw and it makes such a huge impact on the design. And the curved sides over here, this was actually a design change. I originally designed it to be a big box so the lid would cover the keys when closed. It just seemed a little bit too boxy to me so I decided to switch it up and make it shorter and make the curve here. And I'm actually really happy that I did that. Yes, the keys are now showing when closed, but I think that this curve here just adds a little bit of sleek, sleekness to the table and I just love how it looks. I really don't think that there's anything that I would do differently next time. Maybe if I was making this for a customer, I would not use pocket holes and screws on the back. I would figure out some other sort of joinery that would cover the holes or not have any joinery showing. So. Um, that's it. Thank you again to Woodcraft for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. I will see you on the next one. So satisfying every time. Um.